I hope this podcast can inspire you to always dream big and make it your reality. I am your host, Jess Williamson, a serial entrepreneur and business coach. And today I have Erica Kramer, an international confidence coach and a five-star podcast host of the show Confidence Chronicles. After surviving many traumatic experiences, being in and out of the foster care system, car accidents, and a whole lot of loss, Erica is beaming and a beautiful example of how you can heal your own personal story to transform trauma into triumph. Her message is clear and she is absolutely unstoppable on that mission to create a global empowered community of women who want deep connection, accountability and encouragement to go for the life they desire. Not dissimilar to my own mission, which is to make sure you're all going out there and living the life of your dreams. So I'm excited to get into this chat and let's get started. Awesome. I am here today with the beautiful Erica Kramer, the queen of confidence, and I am super excited to chat with you today, Erica. Yes, I'm super pumped to be here, Jess. Thank you so much for having me. (laughs) Thanks for jumping on. Um, You have had an interesting past, a lot of challenges thrown your way, but that's made you the amazing strong woman that you are today. So I'd love for you to tell us a little bit about your journey to get here. Yeah, so I'll make it short because it's a huge one. As you know, we were talking before, um, but if anybody's interested, you can go to my highlights and watch the whole video. Um, But basically, I grew up in America, in Boston, to a bipolar single mother. Uh, There was a lot of trauma, a lot of sexual abuse, a lot of really rough stuff in my childhood, which then uh, obviously moved into my adolescence. Um, I married my high school sweetheart broke my back. He passed away in a car accident. And I ended up coming to Australia to really run away from my past and not deal with that stuff and think that it could not follow me across the Pacific Ocean to Australia, but it did. And so all of that pain and all of that trauma and all of those things really led me to personal development, life coaching, business coaching, and just learning from all these incredible mentors that I could heal my life and my past. And I really got excited about what was possible for me after eight years. And I decided to do that for women as well. So now it's led me to this amazing work that I get to do as a confidence coach and business mentor, which is amazing. Incredible. And I think a lot of people are in a similar space where they think changing their external environment is going to change the internal. And you've been on that incredible journey that you realize that's not the case now, you know, escaping to Australia wasn't going to solve those challenges and those, the heartache and all of the things that were thrown your way. And so, What got you started? Like a lot of people are very resistant, I guess, to self-development work or they think it's crazy or, you know, Mm. we'll just brush it under the rug. So what made you take that initial leap and think, I'm actually going to get some help with this or explore some new avenues? Yeah, I think that one of the best things that we can all do is look at look at our lives, right? Like if if you continuously have issues with your money, if you're continuously in shitty relationships, if you're always having a struggle with your body and your weight, you know, these things that always show up and they've been showing up for maybe months or years and then we finally go, I'm sick of it. So I reached a point where I kept attracting the same crappy person into my life and basically the same guy. It was like I was dating the same guy, but he looked different. And at the end of it, I thought, you know what? The common denominator is me. I attracted this guy. I am also in this relationship. I'm in Australia now as a loser all by myself, chasing men to this country. And so I had to, I was in so much pain and I had done so much that I was just like, I'm done. This is it. And so I think we reached those levels of I'm done. I need to do something about this. So unfortunately, a lot of us wait until we're in excruciating pain or we break our back or someone gets cancer or some shit happens. And then we go, oh, I better look at it. So I guess the invitation is not to wait till shit comes crashing down, but maybe start paying attention now to the little whisper inside of you that's like, I'm unhappy. I hate my job. I don't want to work here. I don't want to be with that person. I hate what I'm doing. I need more money. And so I think if you're getting that whisper, it's going to become a yell. And, and you might have to wait five years, but it's like, why? Let, let's listen to that now. Uh, and that's really the moment where I decided. And the second part of it is my husband, who was my personal trainer, he was like my friend at the time. He was the example. 
So I saw someone and I'm like, man, he's so peaceful. He's so calm. He lives a great life. And he's told me like, I work on myself. I have a coach. I, I do spiritual work. I do this. I do this. And so I was like, I got to see the example. And that's what I hope to be for women. Like be the example of what's possible when you take responsibility and commit to going for what you want. Right. So, uh, yeah, that's, that's really it. Like start looking around your life. Yeah. And was it sort of then from recommendations or how did you take that leap? Yeah. So then I saw, so Hamish was my friend at the time and he's like, I know I I told him my story. He was the first person I really told my story to, because again, he showed me that I was safe and his vibe was um, non-judgmental and just caring as a friend. And so I explained and he was like, that's remarkable where every other man that I had dated was like shamed me or condemned me kind of thing. Like, Oh, don't tell anyone your messed up story uh, because we'll care what people think about us. And he was really welcoming. And so I think we need to vibe as well and how, see who we're telling our stories to and how people are taking it. And then he said to me, I see this coach. And if you want to talk to her, I think she's amazing. She's helped me with this, that, and the other. He was very gentle. I think sometimes when we work on ourselves, we want to shove personal development down people's throats. Like, you should read this book. You should go to this Tony Robbins thing. And people are like, no, I don't want to do that. So he was the example. Uh, I have this joke where I call him like he was Gandhi, like he was being Gandhi, like being change, <laughs> yeah. you know, like being change you wish to see. And my husband was Gandhi for so many weeks and he wasn't like, I've been Gandhi for two weeks. When are you not, when are you going to come on board? He was just being. <laughs> yeah. You know? um, and so people, people pay attention to when you're being that, when you're being Gandhi and they, they watch and they go, man, why is she so happy? Why is Jessica so like bubbly all the time? What are you doing? What are you eating? What are you drinking? And then they come and ask you uh, and then you can offer it. So I think we have to be careful that we don't shove it down someone's throat, even though, cause we know air quotes that it can help them. It's like, they need to be ready, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Amazing. Well, I, it sounds just like it was sort of fate crossed with, you know, yeah. everything that you needed just coming to you at that time. So incredible story. Mm-hmm. Um, so after that, what took you down? So you had some great progress with that. What was that journey like? Was it uncomfortable or was it just like, yes, this is exactly what I needed? I think it was both. <laughs> um, you know, it's it's excruciating. Uh, initially, I, I like to use the analogy of like spring cleaning, you know, you mm-hmm. make a big ass mess. Like if someone walks in when you're cleaning, they're like, what are you doing? This is a bomb. But you're like, I'm actually cleaning. You know, I have to rip all this shit apart and throw things everywhere. So it gets really messy before it gets settled and calm and beautiful and organized and structured. So it was excruciating, but I knew uh, how I was living was more excruciating, you know, um, and, and shoving everything under the living room rug and pretending that it wasn't there was more excruciating. And so I think that it was hard, but it was amazing. And when I got transformations, when I got like mentorship and when I got to see, you know, paying for it was excruciating because I didn't think I had the money. Like most people say, I don't have the money. That's a lot of money, but we are spending money on the things, honey. You know this, right? Jessica's like (laughs) nodding with me like, hell yeah. So stop saying you don't have the money for mentors. If you want to change your freaking life, like you're spending money on eyelashes and nails and cars and bullshit that's not going to help you. And you're not spending it on people who can actually help you change your own life. So it was excruciating, but it was incredible. And so So I was just so obsessed with it. I got like, wow, this is amazing. Cause I knew who I was. Like I remember who I was. And then I was seeing this new version of myself and I'm like, that's not triggering me anymore. That's not upsetting me anymore. Wow. Like I can sleep. I'm peace, you know? Um, and I had found the man of my dreams. Like it was like a fairy tale. So I was really obsessed with it. Um, and at no point did I want to help other people learn how to do it, which I think is funny too. Cause a lot of my students now, three months into it are like, I want to become a coach. And I'm like, whoa, you're like three months in, like chill, like take it. Yeah. I, have, I was eight yeah. months, eight years in. And then I went, mm-hmm. maybe I could help people, you know? And I'm not saying you can't do it in after a year, but I think we need to make sure that we fully receive mm-hmm. it and we fully do it and not just learn it, but then we live it. And then we see the result of what we learned in our life before we go trying to teach other people. Cause that's a little bit of of I think saving people as well that we try to go, Oh, I know what, what I'm doing now. I'm going to show someone. It's like, no, baby, you are avoiding and you need to go deeper into it. So, yeah. Yes. No, no that's so, so, so such, such a great point. point. I really love yeah, that, 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 yeah, people want to take, take it and then pass it straight back. back. You yeah. know, it's kind of like someone, someone throws, throws a hot potato, potato at you and you kind of like throw it straight back out. So super important that people, 
sit with that uncomfortableness because it's definitely going to be uncomfortable Um, and incredible, incredible things that you're doing now. So tell us about the journey and, and how the queen of confidence came to be because I'm sure you went through a ton of different personal development, gained a ton of different things, including confidence. What made you choose confidence as, you know, the important factor and run with it and now you're changing tons of women's lives all over the world thanks jessica i think um when i joined my first business uh, mentoring kind of group uh slash cult i um (laughs) it's a whole nother podcast everybody um but that that there, I didn't have a business and I was in this business group, like with all these people, like I love the community, like the foster kid in me was like, people, community, this is great. So I didn't have a business and I loved dressing really nicely and wearing big necklaces. And I was always into like dressing nicely. And so one lady said to me, are you a stylist? And I was like, no, but maybe that could be my business. And she's like, you should be a stylist. And I'm like, okay. So of course, as you do, I got to like researching and creating this thing. And so I became a stylist in this group and I started styling women. And, you know, those of us that are in business, we know that whoever solves the biggest problem is the one that people go to. So I was like, what's the big problem in styling? And I realized that women who are size 16 and an average woman in Australia is a size 16 and most stores didn't cater. So I was like, I'm a size 10 at the time. Right. And I'm like, Mm. I'm going to help women that are size 16, like plus size. And I'm going to help them find clothing and all this. And so I became like this plus size stylist in a size 10, like hosting events, running these things because it was a big problem and I wanted to help women. Uh, And then that I did that for a little while. And I realized that, no matter how amazing a woman looked and how beautiful externally the confidence externally was, like their nails and their hair and all that, they would still look in the mirror and doubt themselves and be like, I'm not good enough. I'm still not good enough. I don't know if I can do this. I hate myself. And I was like, wow, I think we really need to stop worrying about the external confidence and look at the inner confidence. And at the time I was working with different mentors. I mean, we were deep in our investment of of personal development. So my styling events were about cotton and fabric and linen slash what are your thoughts and your beliefs and your childhood memories? And it was just like, whoa, like people were coming to my styling event and crying, you know? Wow. <laughs> and so it was like sprinkling in personal development and I really loved it. And then mm-hmm. I, I realized, you know, after a while, like, I don't want to do that. When I had my second son, I was like, I don't want to talk about cotton. And 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 I, every time I would do these events, Jessica, I would be like, shit, I've got styling confidently on the weekend. Was it cotton or linen that makes you stretch and look, oh, I don't know. It's hard. I don't, it's like, oh, I had to like think. It wasn't like, yes, I can't wait. I was like, oh, shit, I don't want to talk about clothing anymore. I want to talk about the the stuff that's making those women cry. And so... I just decided then and there, I was like, I'm done. I'm done styling. I'm talking about the external confidence. I want to call the inner wardrobe and the thoughts and the beliefs and the bullshit that doesn't serve us. And that's going to help women. And then I just flipped it and I told everyone, I'm not doing styling anymore. The queen of confidence talks about confidence. We don't talk about linen and horizontal stripes. And so I'm done. And it was really a line in the sand because I did it on Facebook. At the time, Facebook was my thing. It wasn't Instagram. I had like a thousand followers on Instagram. Yeah, Um, And this was like two and a half years ago. And I was like, I'm done. I'm not doing it. I canceled that event. I changed it to a confidence event and I called everyone to refund them. And they were like, no, I need confidence if I'm going to style. So I'm coming. And I'm like, oh my gosh. So that was kind of the moment where it was, it was created and built and done. (laughs) Wow. Such an incredible journey. And I guess, you know, that's a great lesson for everyone to realize, you know, if something's calling you, if something doesn't quite feel right, then there's probably a reason for that. And yes, you probably liked styling and you liked, you know, dressing up and feeling great, but getting to really at the core of that was the inner work. And that's amazing that you had little elements of that, that you could at least try Mm. and realize that that really was what you loved. And I think that's a great lesson for everyone is to, if you feel that something's calling you, give it a try. I mean, what's the worst that can happen, right? So, yeah, amazing story. Um, and so, two and a, you said that was two and a half years ago. So, now two and a half years on, you're running events, you've got people all over the world in your programs um, and making a huge impact on the world. So, 
What would you say to someone who is maybe thinking about going after their dreams or not quite taking that leap? What would you give them in advice in terms of your own journey, but also, you know, do you have any tips for them to build that confidence within themselves? Yes, I think the first main thing would be like really manage your thoughts, like your mindset is everything. And I know people say like, oh, mindset, but it's 100% true. Like it's the number one reason why businesses don't continue. It's the number one reason why we fail. It's the number one reason why we don't have what we want. There's a story in there that you're telling yourself about something. And I would just say, find out what that story is and get investigating on the truth of it or not. And if it's not true, which most of the times it's not, then why are we allowing that to stop us from showing up, from serving, from creating, from building, from living the life we want to live? And all of us have the opportunity to have that. So it's not about what happened to you. It's about what are you going to do next? Like now what? You know, you're still alive. Now what? Like get up and let's go. So I think that one of the biggest things is mindset and making sure, and I say this to all of my clients, make sure that you work on the you, the human being, the person in the business, because forget about trying to build an amazing business if you have not worked yourself. So if you Mm -hmm. have a point of investing in business or yourself, invest in yourself always, because you need to fix up yourself, not fix up, but fix up the mindset that says that you're not good or you can't do that, which is going to come in your business. Business is huge, right? Like it's this big personal development beast of a thing because it's all your thoughts and you're, Oh, I can't do this. And you're trying to figure things out. So I would say, you know, business is personal. You are the person in the business work on you first. Um, And then the second part of that is I would say, find mentorship, find people who have done what you want to do, find people who are walking on the path and make sure that you do your due diligence. Cause there's a lot of bullshit out there. There's a lot of people like six figures. Yeah. 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 With Gucci bags. And they're not doing shit. They're not making any money. They live in their mama's house, you know, and that's, cool if you live in your mama's house, but I'm saying like, don't be acting like you're some big ass entrepreneur when you're not making profit, you know? And so I think we need to be careful that we're not looking uh, at the people and thinking that they're incredible and they're amazing. And then we pay the money. And then in the reality is they can't teach you shit. So I think we mm. have to look, be responsible for who we choose. Um, and then the third thing is show up. Like we're so lucky that we have the internet. Like, We are so lucky that we have Instagram is free, Facebook, we got Clubhouse, right? Like, hey, Clubhouse, you know, like (laughs) we connected on Clubhouse. Like there's so much now. And that's how you start a business is you get on social media and you build an audience that you don't sell Mm -hmm. shit to. You just build friends and an audience and start sharing the stuff that you do and your story is important. So get your mind right, find a mentor, find someone to help you. And number three is show up online yesterday. Like yesterday, start talking about... (laughs) What you do, what you offer, speak to your clients, build the audience. Because the day that you build a program, one of my clients just did this. She didn't have a program, but she had an audience that she was loving and talking to. She did a a program at a low price point and she made like $28,000 in her first launch. And that just spoke to the fact that her people were there. They were loved by her and they were waiting to buy from her. So audience before you launch some big program that no one's going to buy because you don't have the audience. Amazing. I always say business is like the best personal development test you can ever have because (laughs) you have to level up. If you're not leveling up with your business, then you're going to get left behind. And everything you said was absolutely spot on and something that I preach all the time as well. So I'm so (laughs) glad you said that. Um, So in terms of obviously finding a mentor is great because they can help you obviously identify what you're possibly doing that you don't even realize. Yes. But what what would be your top three tips for starting to gain confidence in yourself? And I actually just did a podcast um, the other week about being an introvert mm. and being confident because people think that being, and I did for a long time as well, that being confident equals being loud and it doesn't necessarily have to be that because I've been on my own journey and made that realization so what would you say around people that are like no I just can't be confident or that's not for me you know I'm not the loud person because that's something that I really believe in that you can be confident you can show up and you don't have to be that extroverted personality Yes, a million percent. One of my girlfriends talks about this, Suze Chadwick, and she says like having a bold brand. And it doesn't mean your bold brand can't be cream or neutral colors or gray. You know, it doesn't have to be hot pink Mm. with like confetti. You know, Um, I work with a lot of women in business who are not like me at all. And I want and they choose me for their mentor. And I say like, and I think it's because I'm like, your superpower is that you get to be you. And like, 
there's so many people who want you, who want that calm, chilled vibe, and they want to feel safe, and they want to feel how you make them feel. And then other people need some firecrackers up their ass, you know, and, and that's that vibe. So I think that one number one thing is, the number one thing if you want to be more confident is stop saying, I'm not confident. You know, like, I know it's ridiculous, but it is like, the super trick, like write it down. I stop saying I'm not confident because when you tell yourself that you can't be, I'm not a millionaire. I'll never do this. I'll never do that. Like what a fucking curse that you're putting on yourself. You're just like casting a spell on yourself. It's like, I will never be confident. Okay. Or I am working on ways to become more confident. I'm learning how to become more confident. Shift how you say things because you're listening and your subconscious is getting programmed. You are programming yourself. So number one, stop telling yourself you're not confident. You're not smart. You're not pretty. uh, You're not good at business. Whatever it is, the crappy thing you say, stop saying that. That's number one. Uh, number two, I would just define what confidence is to you, what it means to you. It's it's not a wrong definition. Your definition versus mine is totally different. And it's awesome because when you look at the dictionary, it's like confidence is the belief in oneself and one's abilities. That's what confidence means. That's not what it means mm. to me. To me, confidence means can you take action even though you're shitting your pants? Can you still go for it while you're simultaneously like shitting yourself? It sounds like a fun thing, right? It's like, what? I'm so nervous and I'm so scared. I don't know. Amazing. You're on track. So redefine what confidence means to you because you get to do that. No one gets to tell you shit unless you allow them, unless you believe in that. If you have no belief, there's no power over you. So you create what the definition is for you. Um, And the third thing is, I, would, I love what you said about being an introvert and, and it sounds like you're defining what confidence is to you. But the third thing is I would say, find out where you hide, find out where you uh, pull back, find out where you have, where you let your fear fuck you over instead of letting your fear fuel you. Like, where are you letting that happen? So I say to my clients, like, you know, we have a process and it's like the five C's. Uh, and I can share it with your audience and, and we can, you know, you can send it off if you want to, but the five C's and it's really easy. And it's like, I use confidence as a practice. And so mm-hmm. I always tell people, where are you in the practice of confidence? Like, are you, if we use the yoga example, are you on the yoga mat ready to go? Like in downward dog, you know, are you in child's pose? Are you like, hold on a minute, I'm, I'm waiting. Are you like not even near the yoga mat and not even near practice? Are you like, I stopped practicing a long time ago because I fell or I farted in yoga. I don't know. Like what happened? You know? So it's like, we have to really look at where we are in our practice of confidence, because anywhere we are, we can in that moment decide to step back into it. So it's not gone, or it's not ruined, or you haven't done anything wrong. Maybe you just stopped practicing confidence. And so um, it's five C's. uh, And I won't like, unless we have time, I won't go through it. But if you do you want to go through it or? Yeah, we can go through it. Yeah. yeah. If you want. It's a quick little practice. So I look at it as a practice because there's no final destination, right? Like you can't reach confident. Uh, it's, it's something you're confident and then a bird shits on your head when you walk outside and you're like, oh, you know, like it go- comes and goes. So number one is choice. And basically choice is all about you making a decision on what you need to do because we all have decisions that we're not making. And that's why we're struggling. We're not happy. We're in jobs we hate. We're in relationships that don't serve us. So number one, what's the big ass decision that you know you need to make? What's that choice that you haven't made? Write it out. It should be scary. Number two is courage. And I wrote courage because confidence does take courage, but courage is not this lion in the room, this amazing, strong thing. Courage is a scared, shaky voice, shaky kneecaps, self-doubt to the extreme. So basically, I want you to know if you're doubting yourself, if you're scared as hell, if there's pee dripping down your leg, that's courage. (laughs) Like that's courage. Can you move anyway? So number one, make a choice. Number two, scared as hell. Amazing. You're right on track. Number three (laughs) is create. And create is all about what's the small step, the small, tiny, one little baby action step that you can do to make that big decision and big choice happen. I didn't put this as action on purpose because we hustle and we do, do, do so much. And sometimes all the shit that you do is just exhausting you and it's not adding to your, your step. And so instead of taking action, can you take aligned action? What can you create? Maybe the action you want to take doesn't exist. Mm. Maybe you can't do it. So can you create a way to make that decision happen in a, in a small step? And that small step basically, uh, what's the word called? Snowballs into momentum. So number three is about create. What's one tiny thing you can do? I want to run a live event. Pick a date. Find a venue. Tell people on Instagram you're going to do it. Makes sense? The little one. Yeah. Number four is consider. So after you took that step, that action, 
consider how did you go? How was it? This is all about evaluating what you do. So many times we don't evaluate our own action. We don't, we don't give ourselves props for taking action and we don't evaluate when shit hits the fan. So evaluate is about, did you, did it, did it go really well? Was it amazing? Great high five. Or did you suck? Like, was that bad? Uh, this is where people say fail. I don't use the word fail because I can never fail. And I think again, back to point one, our words matter. So it's like, Mm -hmm. if I say I failed, therefore I'm a failure. I don't want to jump back into the practice of confidence. So I say, okay, that sucked. I learned that that guy I came to Australia for was an asshole. (laughs) I learned (laughs) that wasn't a good decision, you know? So cool. What did you learn from the action you took in number three? Boom. I learned this. Take that, put it in your pocket because you're going to need that when you keep going. And then number five is continue and continue is literally like go back to one make a choice, courage, boom. So courage and continue become this like wind that keeps you moving into the practice. It's a continuous practice. And no matter where you are in it, one to five, you could go, I'm here. Okay. What do I need to do next? Go back to one or go to three, wherever you are, like takes you step by step. And I did it because I really wanted to break down that every single one of us can be confident in the moment. Like today, like right now, maybe you stopped, maybe you fell down really hard and you made it mean that you're a failure and that you suck and that no one wants to buy what you have to sell or whatever. And you fell down and you're on the floor with a little cut on your knee and you haven't stood back up. So you're technically in four, you haven't continued. And then the longer you sit your ass on that floor, the more you doubt yourself. And the more you doubt yourself, the more it creeps in. And then it puts like a crowbar into your practice of confidence. So my whole thing is like, if you fall, which you will, we all fall. <laughs> get your ass back up fast. Like fall fast and get up. Like not yeah. fall fast, but fall fast. You're going to fall flat on your ass. Can you get your ass back up and not look around? Nobody cares that you fell. They're falling too. You know, like you fall, you get up and then boom, back to one. Now what do I need to do? What's my choice? What's my decision that I need to make? And so that's the whole thing about the practice of confidence. And in the book, I break down like where the sabotage happens in each step because there is sabotage that happens. Um, yeah. But that's really it. It's a quick little process that can help you keep moving because that's the whole point. We got to keep moving. And I love that it continues to cycle because people think I'm going to go to one, you know, webinar or one thing and, you know, change my life. It doesn't happen like that. It's the continuous practice Mm -hmm. that then it becomes second nature and that's where it grows. So I love that that's part of your entire process um, Mm -hmm. because it's super, super powerful. We do need that repetition to grow. It's like building a muscle. You don't go to the gym once and then you're, (laughs) you've got strong muscles. You've got to do the same with your brain. So um, that's awesome. So now you are the queen of confidence, but I would love to know, was there any part along your journey, not not in the past, but once you sort of started that journey into the queen of confidence, was there any like imposter syndrome or was there anything like, I can't do this or who am I to be here? Was there any of those sort of thoughts that came up? (laughs) Yes, yes, yes. Capital Y-E-S. Okay. Yes. Um, I remember the name, it was called um, the queen of curves when I was a stylist. Mm. Uh, And that's what it was called back then. And then I changed it because I thought my friends that were thin and they didn't resonate with being curvy felt like they couldn't come to my events when I was a stylist. And I never want to exclude. I want to be super inclusive. So I was like, okay, curves doesn't work. What do women want? Confidence. They all want confidence. So I just changed the name easily. Queen of Queen of Confidence. And she is my alter shego. So I'm not the queen of confidence, <laughs> right? She's my alter shego, right? So she's like my yeah. wonder woman, you know? And so when I look at her and that name, I think we all are the queen of confidence. That's who we want to be. We want to be a queen. We want to be confident. We want to feel amazing. So I never resonated with like the tiara and the waving and the queen, like, oh, we got the queen here. I'm like cringing, like, don't call me the queen, <laughs> like, oh, And my husband, I said to him, maybe we should change the name to like confidence creation or, you know, maybe we should change the business name. And he's like, Erica, no, like you need, they need a leader and you need to be the leader, Mm -hmm. like be the leader. People are looking for a leader, fucking stand in your platform in the spotlight and lead. And I thought it was an egoic thing. And I had this whole thing about, I don't want to be her. I don't want to be her. And then finally Mm -hmm. what he said to me, I was like, he's right. Like people are looking for leaders in your industry. They need a leader. It doesn't mean that if you jump onto the spotlight, 
and you jump onto the platform and the light is on you, that you take light away from me or you take light away from Jessica. You, We all have a spotlight and, and a platform to stand on. So it doesn't take away from another woman. And it was like, whoa, like, okay, I can be her, but you can be you and we can all shine because at the end of the day, the goal is to be of service and be seen, be visible so that people who need us can see us. We can help them. They can get on a platform and they can help other people. So I did mm-hmm. have major imposter syndrome with the Queen of Confidence. Um, now I have a fucking crown on my wall, spray painted. Uh, now people call me the queen and I'm just like, don't cringe, don't cringe. Um, and now it's like, okay, just own it. So I think that, and then also I want to do a Ted talk and I'm so scared, but I'm going to do it. Right. But I'm like, holy shit. I'm going to be doubting myself the whole time because the belief is like, I can't speak for 18 minutes, but that's bullshit because you can train yourself to speak for 18 minutes, girl. So yeah, it happens all the time to me. Um, and now I use it as an up level. Yeah. yeah. And you have like, do you notice that that's triggering in you? And then do you have tools that you just whip out to sort of, you know, build up that resilience from that, those thoughts? Yeah. I, I used to use them a lot and now it's how I am. So I think in the mm-hmm. beginning you, you have a tool and then you do that thing. And then when you do it so much, it becomes who you are. So I don't do it. It's who I am now. Right. But I, I used a tool from a lady called Byron Katie and the book is called Loving What Is. And it's all about inquiring your thoughts. And basically, it's just breaking down everything you think that's not serving you and asking if it's really, really true, if we know for sure. And when I started doing that on paper, on my phone, on the toilet, at the red light, on my Kmart receipt, like I was just like, oh my gosh, everything I think is bullshit. It's so limiting. And so there's a story of why I'm not a billionaire. There's a story why you're not a multimillionaire, Jessica. There's a story. We all have a story. And so it's like, if we're not willing to unravel and invest, investigate and break down that thought or that story, we'll never know the truth. And then we believe that to be true. So I would say that that's a really great tool um, to go. I can't speak for 18 minutes. Oh my God, what if I fail? Oh my God, what if this happens? And then I'm like, what if you don't? Uh, And I talk about in the book, it's like creating a confidence mindset, like creating a mindset for confidence to gear yourself to always be thinking, I can do this. And what if I can do it versus the rewiring, right? How we were learned. Mm. So um, that's kind of the tool that I use. And then I, I don't believe everything I think at all. Like I know that what I think is, it's it's like little clouds that pop into my head and I let the little party happen. And then I go, mm-hmm, okay, whatever. And then I, I decide what I want to believe and think. So I let them be in my head because we can't control what we think, but we, we can control what we decide to believe. And so I put my power into that. I get to choose a buffet of thoughts and I avoid the shit ones. You know, I don't believe those. Yeah, I love that. And you touched on your newest book, which is super, super exciting. And I've seen it is a number one bestseller on Amazon. So congratulations. So very exciting. Um, So how was that journey? Were you just like, I need a do a book one day or (laughs) what sort of started that process? Yeah, I definitely have a few books and I didn't want to do like the life story autobiography book because I was like Mm. too much, too big. I don't want to do that. How the hell do I tell that story? And that was a story, right? That I couldn't do it. And so I really wanted to do the the one about the practice of confidence and really teaching women how easy, uh, not easy, but how simple confidence could be and that it is accessible, but I wanted to talk about the reality of it. And so I named it Confidence Feels Like Shit, which is one of my podcasts that I did early on, like early days, which is so weird because I didn't plan to call my book that, but it just kind of came. And I'm like, because I don't think people think that confidence feels like shit. I think we think confidence is awesome. And if I were more confident, I'd be awesome. And it's like, Mm. actually, (laughs) it feels like crap, you know? So I wanted to call it that because I think that there's a truth that we don't talk about with confidence. And it's what we've been chatting about this whole time, that if you're willing to mess up, fall down, hit your face on the floor publicly, your family talks shit about you, your friends say that you're, you know, something about you, people not agreeing with you. If you're willing to experience all of those really uncomfortable and crappy emotions, then yes, confidence will be available to you. But we don't get to get it without a yucky feeling or without hard emotions that we move through. So it feels like shit when you're doing it. And then you 
go on the TED stage and you're like, hey, everybody, I'm awesome. And people go, oh, my God, Erica, you killed it. But no one saw the skid marks, right, before I got on yeah. stage or <laughs> the five minutes before the stage, like, oh, my God, I don't think I can do this. I'm fucking an imposter. Who the fuck am I to do this? Ah. And like the sweaty armpits. No one saw that. But they see you do a TED talk and you like hashtag killed it. But it's like, mm -mm, let's be real. What it takes for you to be confident is hard. It's scary. It, it, I, I give so many props to women who do scary shit because I know what it takes. As a confident woman, I know what it takes. And so it's not simple and it's not easy. And a lot of us avoid it. So I made the book because I really wanted people to hear about the truth about confidence and maybe look at it in a different light. Uh, and I wanted it to be accessible so that people could do a step. Like I love action shit. Like I don't want to motivate you. I want you to leave going. I'm going to get Byron Katie's book. I'm going to do the five steps. I'm going to do this. Like I want action. I don't want you to feel like, oh, that was kind of cool. You know, it's like, no, what are you doing right now about it? You know? Yeah. Yes. Awesome. Amazing. Well, congratulations on the huge success of your book yeah. and spreading such an important, important message. So what is next? Oh, what is next? My husband's like, nothing. We need a break. Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, I think because of the two and a half years of our business and what we built in such a short time and, and financially what we did and, and integrity wise, like we, we really want to help people and I will help people over making money any day. So um, I really, as a Puerto Rican woman from a marginalized community and growing up on food stamps and that, I always want to have something in my business that helps the underdog and that helps the accessibility. So I'm not going to be charging $100,000 for a mastermind, not because I can't and I'm not worth it. Fuck yeah, we're all worth it. But it's to me, I'm like, I really want to make sure that people can access it, you know? Yeah. So um, after I think last year in June, I decided to create a little business group. So a small group of women that I would mentor and teach what I did because we went from zero. No, I'm not intelligent. Like I'm smart, but I'm not an intelligent, you know, business minded woman who knows math and shit like that. I had no followers. I didn't have any money for Facebook ads and no clients. And so it was literally through integrity and showing up with authenticity and connecting with an audience, which we all have the ability to do. I love mm. that everyone can do what I did. I'm not special. I'm actually anti-special. There's nothing special about me. And so I, I used that and said, I want to help other women do it. So we launched a mastermind supporting women in business. And that's coming up this year again, because I wanted to see how we did it. It was awesome. They got great results. It was amazing. And it actually really made me feel so much more on purpose. Like I'm serving women, everyday women on life coaching and mindset and, you know, through the sisterhood changing their lives. But now other coaches, healers and change makers want to do what I did. And there should be more women doing what we're doing. And so I've taken them under my wing and now I'm offering that. Um, so that's kind of this year is more, a little bit more business work. It's not my full thing. It's like twice a year, I'll do it. And then next year we're going to build a school so that we can, oh, wow. I know. So that's going to be huge. So we're trying to like hibernate a little bit this year so that we can be ready for that. So, yeah. um, you know, I think again, why do we do what we do? The legacy and the point of everything is that when I get hit by a bus and die, if that happens to me, what happens to the message and the women? And if I really want to support and serve a school would be a fantastic way to do it because it's not about me. It's about them learning what we did, teaching them, and then having really responsible, fucking responsible, incredible coaches who actually have done the work and, and understand <laughs> the level of responsibility that it is to hold space for someone else. Uh, and then they're putting that out in the world. Instead of going the coaching industry shit, I'm going to do something about changing it. Instead of complaining, mm. change it, you know? So, so that's coming up for us, which is going to be ginormous. And then probably another book. So incredible. Yeah. <laughs> Just because you don't have enough on your I plate. Know, we know. Next year. Had enough. <laughs> yeah. And then the Amazing. Oh, well, thank you so much for joining me today and shining your light and sharing your knowledge with all of us. Um, it's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you so much for having me and thank you for the work that you're doing in the world. It's my pleasure. I am so, so happy to have connected with you and your beautiful audience. Thank you so much. Okay. <laughs> Thank you so much. And we will chat very, very soon. Yes. See you soon. See ya. If you would like to hear more from Erica, you can go and find her over on Instagram at the queen of confidence. As always, please don't forget to screenshot and share this to your social media. Please do tag me and Erica so that we know and we can share it right back. 
If you are looking for more inspiration to go out there, chase your dreams, I do have a free webinar on my website that is my three key steps to building the business of your dreams. And I'm sharing a ton of my knowledge and tips over there. So if you're interested, it is completely free. You can find it over on my website, jessicawilliamson.com.au. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and I will see you next time.